Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Haven't I already made this video like five times already between Shira and, and Doctor Who? And you know, I'm going to be making some for the Orville 2 and Star Trek Discovery. We gotta talk about the Rotten Tomatoes scores because every time that we see this drastic sort of, you know, just difference between the critics and the audience, you, you've got to really wonder, okay, what what are the what are the critics getting from out of this? Why do they have to be so positive for no reason? This New Year's special wasn't that good. I've been super easy on Doctor Who this whole season because in comparison to something like Star Trek Discovery, I don't hate it as much. I, I really honestly don't. It's not a good show. But I mean, it, it's not, maybe I don't have the biggest, the, the, that big of an investment in, in uh, Doctor Who like I do Discovery or something. But we gotta talk about this. We, we, you know, are, are we in that day and age where there is just absolutely no negativity allowed and no criticism allowed? If you say something like, hey, maybe you should make a, a Doctor Who that's, I don't know, entertaining and travels through time and space. Are you not allowed to say that? Is that considered negative in this day and age? I, I, I don't know. Oh, let's, what, what do the critics say about it? Oh, oh my God. From Major Rachel Leishman, Leishman from the Mary Sue as a top critic. We, we've, we've talked about Rachel Leishman before, I think, on this channel. Her name is very familiar. When she is a much happier and honestly sillier doctor, she still has that fire that can bring civilizations to their knees. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. She seems like this this goofy mom of a few toddlers that looks overwhelmed that, that you would, like, have to help hand her the diaper bag as she's trying to juggle, you know, the stroller, the diaper bag, and three kids, and all their snacks, and some sippy cups. That's that's who Jodie, Jodie Whittaker reminds me of when she's silly. Which is fine if you're casting her as a mom or, or something. She's not scary. She's not intimidating. Also... I'm pretty sure this might be a response to one of the videos I made where I said the doctor needs to be scary and intimidating and have balls and, and bring these alien civilizations to their knees. She needs to be scary. She's just not. And, and some of the best moments of Doctor Who were when the companions would look at the doctor like, oh, you're, you're actually going to murder everybody. And that's what we wanted, Doctor Who. Oh, my God. So, so. Go ahead and read through all these. I don't even want to give these guys that much screen time for all their, their fake positive reviews. And when I say fake positive reviews, they're basically negative reviews with a positive splat, with a like a, a fresh certified fresh tomato. Because we're in a day and age of no negativity, I think. Because they lose their, their pretend access to maybe an interview or a screener or something if these websites give them terrible reviews. And a lot of these are bad reviews. Uh, showrunner Chris uh, Chin Chimbal provides perhaps his best script of the season for this episode, injecting a certain showmanship and skill into the proceedings. This tells me, well, also this person gave him a four out of five. This tells me that throughout the whole season, we haven't gotten that, which is true. We really haven't had this epic scale of Doctor Who, like, you know, when you have just massive swarms of Daleks and spaceships. This is like really a nothing thing. We had one freaking Dalek. Keep that in mind. We had one Dalek in this whole episode, and that was supposed to be special. Oh, what, what, what does uh, Ben Lawrence say? Four out of five also. What this episode title resolution proved is that Doctor Who is a series that needs, in part, to embrace its 55-year history. This is also a backhanded compliment, saying that basically we haven't seen Doctor Who embracing Doctor Who-iness stuff. You know, there's no time travel. There's no spaceships. At least that's what I'm reading into it. That, that we kind of need to bring the Daleks in at some point, or we need to bring some sort of Doctor Who stuff into Doctor Who. Otherwise, it's just a boring soap opera about a guy and his dad, which is fine if you like that sort of thing. I watch science fiction to get away from that stuff. I want to see space stuff and, and aliens and Daleks and... and phasers with if I'm watching Star Trek. I want to watch I want to watch science fictiony things. I like the sound effects. I like the the ship battles. I like the alien noises. I like the Daleks. I like hearing a ton of Daleks come at you and go exterminate, exterminate. That's what I want out of Doctor Who. I don't want oh, well you weren't here for me, dad, and I moved on and I don't care. I don't care. And they slowed the whole series down. You know, let, let's see what some of the audience says what 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 do you guys say uh is it view all here 
Oh, and I'm going to have to move myself over one second. Please forgive me for that. I do everything live in case you guys didn't know. I'm not a big into editing. So anything you see pop up on screen is just me doing it in the moment. Um, let me, let me see. Let's, uh, let's get one at random here. Um, this, wow, this is a fake score. This, this is, what? Oh, this is a fake half star because he's got a percent mark in his name. Low rating, something that doesn't surprise me at all. Yet another terrible turn for a show that once brought joy and, and hug levels of sci-fi entertainment to millions. Probably huge. Led by a talentless hap claiming to be a writer. Probably hack. And an egotistical actress who acts like she's the question mark one of the on the worst acid trip. And who's in the role because she's a woman. You know, this is such an interesting thing. Is this is this a brand new account? Because usually when you have the percentage in their name. We can't find the page you're looking for. Okay, so yeah, this this review has been deleted or something. Yeah, that looks to be like a fake review. Okay, what's the one under it that says? That's so weird. Normally the fake reviews are, are, are positive for these things like She-Ra, huh? Uh, what, what does the person above it say? Uh, if only season 11 had been like this. Finally, a decent baddie who's, credible, uh, who's a credible threat with a clear agenda. Rebuild their weaponized shell and call the fleet. And not going to let anything get in the way. Knocked off a star for the soapy bit with Ryan's dad. That's a perfectly fair, legit review. And yeah, we did finally get the Daleks. So that's at least something we got. We finally got the Daleks. What does this review say? First ever Doctor Who episode where I was actually cheering for the Dalek. I'm not sure why Mr. Chimnall is obsessed with bad dads. Yes, it's a background set piece as per usual and Graham was great. This doesn't feel like I'm watching Doctor Who. Hopefully they take... The fan feedback into consideration and improve the next season. Yes, yes. Enough with the soap opera stuff, please. Please, enough with the soap opera stuff. Let's see. Jodie Whittaker is every bit the doctor I know and love, and this episode return um, with the Return of the Dalek was, aside from the first episode of season 11, my personal favorite of Whittaker's episodes so far. See, that's a perfectly fair viewer review. Ah, oh, what's this person say? What an awful show. It cannot decide between being a family drama or a comedy special. That I totally agree with. We had an unbelievable start of a 9th century army um, defeating a Dalek, which later decimated a modern army. Yeah, then we have a family drama, which really had no place in the story and really set me into sleep. <laughs> Leon. True, I agree. Then we had Jody who fluttered between a maniac schoolgirl in the playground to just plain silly. I mean, being threatened by Jody is like being savaged by a dead sheep. Wow. Do I want a favor, Chibnall and Whitaker, leave the show now and let it rest in please, peace before you destroy it forever? You know, and I, I don't want to blame Jody Whitaker. She's probably doing the best she can with the material she's given. She's just not being given anything that great absolute crap i turn it off after a short time i'm sick of being beaten around the head with the far less feminine politics it's about time we bring back the real doctor and real doctors male and about science fiction horror not a party political broadcast for the left-wing lunatic party bbc i want my feedback see now you guys in the uk know a lot more about the political stuff they're trying to shove in here with all the brexit stuff than a lot of us over here in america do I didn't catch that whole unit, um, you know, political message. Oh, we got rid of unit because Brexit stuff. I didn't catch all that because I'm not like super, I, I, I go to, I go to science fiction because I don't want politics, basically. When I see that type of stuff, that makes me even more mad. And that makes me really, really kind of agree with the fact that, you know, yeah, this really should be getting the, this 16% it's getting. It's actually getting lower. It was getting a 12% earlier. And, you know, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair score, that 12 to 16%, you know, was it good? No, it was really, really boring. And I, at the end of the day, I need something that's going to entertain me. So if you guys haven't seen my review of the Doctor Who New Year's special, it's absolutely available for you guys to watch. And I would really appreciate it if you do watch it. What do you guys think? I mean, are, are there, are these critics just, just still so clueless? Like, are they just afraid to actually give it a splat because a lot of these are just negative reviews that I'm seeing with a little positive certified fresh on there just just for what just because every show I mean look at this every show absolutely I'm gonna move myself over again so sorry for the, the making you guys dizzy here 
Oh my god, the Orville's getting 100%! What? How? How is the Orville getting 100%? Well, that's the next video, how the Orville is getting 100%. <sighs> yeah, but, but everything else is like 98, 92, 97. That is so odd how, how much everything is getting in the high 90s for television. What, there's no bad TV out there? There's nothing that's just crap? I mean, you, you guys really don't like talking about the, the Orville and stuff, and they've been slamming the crap out of the Orville, but now all of a sudden... Now, all of a sudden, we're getting 100% in Rotten Tomatoes for the Orville? Oh, boy, that's that's kind of, uh, that's surprising. That's really, really surprising to me. But it's about time, you know? It is really much, very much about time. <sighs> so, what, what do you guys think? <laughs> I will probably do a whole video on the Orville later. I just noticed that. I'm like, hmm, why is everything getting 100% all of a sudden? Or everything's getting, like, in the high 90s? What do you guys think? I will I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. I'm probably going to stream immediately after the Orville tonight. Um, what is it? January 3rd, 2019. So if you guys do happen to watch the Orville as it airs, I'm going to stream pretty close to afterwards. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!